Thank you. All right. Evening, everybody. Thanks very much once again. Um, all right. The fly, the first fly is that quick demo fly that Charlie was speaking about. I've been doing it at our tying evenings, and I did it yesterday at Oxbow. But it's, it's a, a quick epoxy buzzer. It's a variation on a on on. And I mean, buzzers are the big buzzword. You guys have been hearing it. They fish very well. Um, this has got a few little things to it that you may or may not know. Um, and and the, the materials we're going to use, well, the hook, first of all, is, is, is a grip. Um, it's one of the new grips, one of the new barbless grips, that 14711BL. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a heavier wire than the other 14723BL. So, I beg your pardon? You want it there? There we go. Okay. I hope you're going to make a video of this eventually, Charlie. If you give it to me, I'll edit it for you. For a small fee, I will. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's a nice hook. It's actually it's, it's, it's a, a little more sturdy. Um, I'd still be a little nervous with this hook around certain waters, but on the whole, it's a lot, lot better than the 14723BL. The other materials, an old material, good old faithful material, um, stretchy floss or flexi floss. Um, I know some of the chaps who are at Oxbow, they saw this fly already, um, but this comes in different colors. Uh, it's a very forgiving material. It's a silicon base. It's not a rubber band. It's not going to rot on you. Um, the other material we're going to be using is uh, angel silk, or you could use lateral scale, or any sort of orange, bright orange yarn. Okay. Um, we're also going to use super glue. Now, I left that behind at Oxbow, so... Um, that was quite important, but I winged it. Um, but <laughs> we're going to use a bit of super glue in it. And then thread color. Now, that, that's quite an interesting subject because you can create different effects with, with this particular buzzer pattern by just changing your, your thread color. Uh, and I've chosen a sort of a golden olive Danville 60 thread, and I'm going to use a sort of a rich brown um, stretchy floss or flexi floss over that. And by just changing thread colors and different colors, I, I keep... My dad's always busy and he put a nice little kit together for me, <laughs> which is my buzzer kit. Um, but that works great. So I've got all different colors. It comes in reds and yellows and browns and claret and tan. Okay. Right. I'm just going to start up with a thread layer. Um, as I say, I've chosen this golden olive thread. My thinking here is... Um, the contrast I'm going to get with this rich brown and what we want to do is just start up at the front third I'm just going to pull this flexi floss over to this side once you've trapped it in with a couple of wraps just push it to the far side of the hook okay now I'm going to have to swing this out of your sort of sight here and I'm just going to start stretching it can you still see it in the camera I don't yeah. alright I'm on the far side of the hook now and this is a demo. You're not going to tie this. So I'm going to be very quick with it. I'm just going to run my thread. So I feel like a mad professor. Yeah. I left my glasses behind, but it's all's good. I'll your mind, mate. I beg your pardon? I can lend you mine. <laughs> Trying to use my dad's, but the hook looked this big. <laughs> Felt like I was tying a saltwater fly rather than a trout fly. Okay, you want to utilize the bend here, okay? You want to get right down the bend of this, uh, this caddis hook or grub hook. And then run your thread back up. Okay, simple as that. Touch when you, turns. Yeah, you don't have to be too particular and neat about it. We're going to whack a whole lot of uh, hard head or I'm going to show you there's a couple of products we can use to finish the fly off. So it's really up to you what you what you decide to, to do. But you don't have to be particularly neat with the thread. All right. Okay, we can cut this tag end out. There we go. Just one point here, you'll notice my, my hook's kind of angled sort of in a downward attitude. The reason for that is just so I can get in here a little more easily. Now you want to pull it quite tightly to start with. What is it? What's that called again? Stretchy floss, flexi floss, um, there's another name for it, somebody might know you. Yeah. Stretch lace, Stretch lace um, lum, 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 begins with the L-U-M, uh, anyway, there's a couple of names, but it's all the same product. It looks like floss without the problems that floss comes with, such as fraying and all that sort of Now, when you wind it, you just want to leave a bit of a space. Okay, and I'm pulling quite tight to start. 
you can get it fairly even. You can tie these buzzers fairly large, um, right down to 16s and 18s with the same material. Because I can pull it as thin as I want. It doesn't snap easily at all. Um, as I start to get up closer to the, the thorax area of the fly, I'm going to start releasing pressure quite substantially and just to create a very slight taper to the fly. All right, we'll just keep. And you want to fill up uh, at least four fifths of the shank. The shank being, it's not a standard shank hook, obviously, so you've got to come right up the bend. I often see people tying flies on these sort of curved caddis hooks and they don't utilize the, the bend. I mean, you might as well tie it on a. I uh, might do one more. Let's see. No, I'll stop there and we can tie that off. Right. Now, you can, I think you can obviously see now if I change my thread color, change the flexi floss color, you can create all different effects with, with the fly. Right. Okay, we're nearly done. Next thing is take a bit of this um, angel silk antron yarn. I suppose you could use goose bites, but not in this particular fly's case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on one length on this side. Uh, let's just get that up a little bit closer. And you know what, I could probably just double this back because I need to create a bit of bolt there. Alright, I'm not crazy about this olive color, this golden olive. I used it to get that effect in the abdomen. So I'm going to whip finish this off and just change my thread color quickly to a black thread. Um, if I'd put a black thread from the very beginning, I would have had a completely different looking buzzer. It would have been a little bit more subtle. The, it's up to you. I mean, really, you can experiment, play around. All right, so I'll just come up with some black thread. All right. And then we just want to build up a little bit more bulk in the thorax area here. Uh, fishing these buzzers, um, chatting to the guys yesterday, there was a lot of questions about how you fish it and that. Really a fly that you fish fairly static. You're not going to be stripping a buzzer along. I mean, you don't see buzzers trucking through the water. They sit there and they hardly move. They're kind of struggling to the surface to try and try and hatch. So you want to really fish this fly fairly static. Um, that's the way you want to fish it. You don't want to be stripping along. I usually fish it in conjunction with another fly. Just try and bias these little cheeks, as we call them, to the underside of the hook. And you, I beg your pardon? Well, if you look at the natural, you know, if we're being very pedantic here, I don't think trout have a pair of these, but <laughs> somebody did tell me, uh, old uh, Gary Borger, in his very, very good book presentation, that trout can uh, sort of identify detail better than you and I can up close. At a distance, no. But when they're up close, they can see detail. So look, if you look at a natural buzzer, it has those wing buds more biased towards the underside. There's a definite exaggeration there. I think it just looks lacquer. When you, when you'll see when we finish this fly off, we're going to be pulling it up and then just tweaking them a bit and so on and so forth. All right. Next thing, I know you can't see what I'm doing on this side, but all I'm doing is tying it off with not too many turns, one or two on that side. I'm just going to turn this quickly and then I'll put it back in into the camera. One or two on that side. Now, most of you know that. That's a standard buzzer. When things get, now things get a little different, what we're going to do, and that's why I didn't tie it down too tightly, is I'm going to start to pull on that slightly. And if I don't like it, I might just tweak it a little bit up. Okay, can you see that? Just pulled it as a little sh shoulder. And the same on that side. Now at Oxbow I didn't have my super glue. So this is where I thought, uh oh, left my super glue. And this is where I winged it. But what I'm going to do is I want to finish this fly off. Just take a couple of turns in front. If you find your thread wants to slip off the front, just lift the hook slightly upwards. With any of these caddis hooks, you often find your thread keeps slipping off and giving you a hassle. Just come in there and... So I could get fond of this magnifying glass. Eh? <laughs> right, we'll just whip finish that off. Well, I can't see how it looks on the camera, but... <laughs> okay, thanks for that.
I'll pay you later. All right, let's just whip finish that off. Now you could just go straight ahead and Sally Hansen's this or but this this particular pattern carries the name of the light bright uh, um, buzzer because he uses a bit of light bright in the wing buds. I just chose angel silk because it's really a nice hot orange color. Right, put some super glue into this. Let's do a bit more here. Don't do it over your lap, eh? I've destroyed it. So many pairs of jeans. It's almost caused divorce in my household. But anyway, what we'll do is we'll just... And what that does, it'll harden up very quickly. And you can actually shape it, hold it, and it'll start to take a bit of shape. If you want, you can take some marking pen and change the color slide. You can get really particular with the realism of this, but it's, it's re there's really no point. All right, that's the tying done. So what I would do is I'd tie a bunch like that um, and then finish them off. Products that you can use to finish them off, there's a lot out there. There's Bug Bond. I've never used Bug Bond. Who's used Bug Bond? It's very expensive. Okay. <coughs> bug Bond's out of the way. Okay. <laughs> I haven't used it, so I can't comment on it. What I have used is Loon's Hard Head. Works great. Um, I beg your pardon? Sorry. There we go. Hard Head. Okay, that's a good product. Uh, it'll last a long time. Um, it dries very quickly. You probably can get away with two coats and you're done with your epoxy buzzers. Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails is going to take three, maybe four coats if you want to be particular about it. The fish don't care, but if you want to be particular about it and have a box that impresses people, you need to put two or three coats of Sally Hansen's. The other alternative is UV fly finish, clear. That's from Loon's. But then you need to buy the very expensive light. Okay? Don't look into this light. It will destroy your eyes. It's a UV light. That's what I'm going to use now. But if I was going to use the hard head, I would just quickly put two coats on and, and we'd be done. Right. This comes with a nice big brush. What you want to rather do is use your needle. Just use orange glasses. You yeah. You, get a, you actually get a shield with some of these uh, lights, which has got like an orange... Yeah shield you know um and then you you can i think you can get glasses look i don't i don't think it's an issue as long as you don't put it straight into your eye don't look into it they use it in dental work yeah. quite a bit hey yeah that's a different story i suppose the dentist's in there and that light's all over the place and you know all right this has got a big brush so i don't want to use the big brush what i'm going to do is just come in and you can be quite aggressive with it Watch the eye of the hook, because once that sets up, you're going to have a lot of fun when the fish are hitting buzzers all over the place and you can't get your tipper through the end. So I'll just be... You can do it in two stages if you like, just a basic stage, just to make sure your body doesn't get overdone, which is probably what I'm going to do here. Just hit that quickly. Now, did you ever try these like, production style and just... Them all off at the same time. Yeah, that's what I mean. Tie a whole, whole bunch, put them on a piece of foam, not in your vice, and then you can sit there and you could. Because the beauty of this stuff is, put one coat, okay, just a thin coat, then hit it, hit them all, and then go in and try and get the sort of more defined shape you want, or whatever the case may be. All right, I think. Let's see. That should be good. Okay, that's fine, and we'll just give the gill area a little bit more. <coughs> All right, that's fine for demo. You can play around. Okay, and that's it. Great pattern. I think the the beauty of these buzzers is they're quick, they're easy to tie, they're, they're forgiving patterns. Um, they sink very quickly. You can hang them below dry. Fish them in conjunction with another nymph. Whatever you want to do. Um, and like a brassy, they just get down there and they, they hang where they should. Not too heavy. It's not like a beaded pattern where you want to hang it below dry. It keeps pulling your, your dry down unless you put enough foam in the, the dry to keep it up or deer hair. Um, and I think that should be it. All right. So that's an epoxy buzzer. Um, another variation. I think the materials you can use... 
in that are I didn't bring my little I'll just pass it around with with your hands um, <laughs> I've got little clips somewhere but I left them behind okay you could play around with different materials um, different finishes uh, just something for you to take away right the fly you guys are going to tie tonight um, you all know the Jansen Dragon it's a great fly but it's a fly that I've always kind of stayed away from because of the laborious sort of having to tie in clumps of marabou. It's like you're tying 20 willy bugger tails into a big fly and then you've got to trim it all away and it irritates me. So I kind of, there's a lot of other ways to, to I never tie to, to pattern these days. I hardly ever do. Um, it's just the non-conformist in me when it comes to flies. So I'm going to just try and show you something. It's a, using a spinning loop technique. Um, which is not difficult. You can do it with hackle pliers or you can do it with the, the real deal, the, the spinning loop tool. Have you got spinning loop tools here, guys? No? You've got hackle pliers. Okay, so I'm going to do it with a hackle plier. Um, damn. <laughs> no, it can be done, don't worry. Um, the hook I'm using, uh, as Charlie was saying, um, is an is a S10. There we go. S10, it's a I, I, I've not tied much on the hook, but it's you don't want a long shank hook with this fly. Otherwise, you're going to be winding a marabou uh, brush for or, or spun loop for forever. Um, I've burnt myself a mono eye, so I can identify my fly when you guys judge the flies. <laughs> no, but I bought just black tough chenille. I mean, we don't want all such a burning mono eyes. You guys know how to burn mono eyes. All right, the trick with burning mono eyes, for what it's worth, is for a fly this size, I'm using 100 pound here. So don't don't use 10 pound and 15 or 20 pound line to burn mono eyes. 60 pound and up is what you want to use to burn your mono eyes. Otherwise, you sit there burning this thing along and then it drips off and you know, and then, you know what? Why do I like burnt mono eyes? I still prefer them. On some of my popper roaches or other flies, I'll use the plastic bead chain. But on this particular fly, it's a bit big. It's a bit, bit too much, okay? on the standard shank hook because you tie it up to about a size 8 standard shank. You can go a bit bigger, sorry, size 6 standard shank. You can go a bit bigger, but I don't know too many guys bringing in size 4 standard shanks. Same thread, I'm just going to use that same golden olive thread. The thread color is not critical. And I'll just put a thread layer up front here. Look, when you, when you put your dragon eye in, Naturally, it wants to slide all over the place, okay? So just take a good three, four, five, six, eight, ten turns around. Then start trying to position it in place, okay? Be careful not to position these eyes too far back. There's nothing worse than a dragon looks like it's got its eyes coming out of its wing case, okay? A dragon's eyes, if you look at the natural, right up front here, very sitting here on the top of his head, that's where the dragon's eyes are. You need to leave a little bit of space in here, just to put a bit of dubbing, get in there. All right, bit of figure eight. Not a bad idea to drop a little tiny bit of super glue in there. By the way, those of you who use super glue in your tying quite a bit, great place to keep super glue. How many of you use super glue and you have to throw it away after two tying sessions? Yeah, I'll just stick it in the fridge, yeah? It does help. Don't lay it down in the fridge. I've done that before and glued the whole bottle to the fridge, much to Alison's disgust. I'd sit there with a screwdriver and try and get it out. So make sure it stands upright, yeah. I just stuck it in a bit of press stick in the fridge and that's good. Right, figure of eight those eyes in. The tough chenille is much easier to work with. It's not as realistic, it's not as, uh, but it'll do for the demo. Okay, we, it's like a red eyed damsel, you're just using black. Do you guys know the story behind the red-eyed damsel? Who knows how the red-eyed damsel came to be? Anybody reads Tom Sutcliffe would know. They ran out of black, <laughs> tough chenille, exactly. <laughs> I wonder how many great patterns have uh, come about from that. Right, okay, burnt mono eyes in, so you'll just use your tough chenille. Okay, don't, don't worry about, don't cut it to length or anything, leave it long. Okay, you want to leave that tough chenille till we finish the fly, whip finished. Done, dusted, leave your eyes long and cut it right at the end. Okay. Okay, we'll run our thread all the way back. Gamagatsu are notoriously sharp on the point, so watch your thread. Make sure you get all the way to the rear. Okay, good old woolly bugger. I've just 
torn off a clump of marabou from one of the feathers. I bought two packets of olives, so this should be enough. All right. And we're just going to tie, tie that in like you would any old woolly bugger. If you want to be particular here and you don't want to have to contend with waste, get yourself up here. Tie it in down there. Whoops, tie it in down there. Leave a bit of space and then run your thread back. That'll save you having to fight with all the waste and so on. Okay, don't worry about length. We're going to pinch that and cut it and do all sorts of things. All right, the next thing you want to do is create that, that dubbing loop. How long? Uh, it's hard to say. You don't need it too long. I would say probably make that loop probably 10, 10 centimeters long. If you make it too long, you're going to be spinning till about 10 o'clock tonight. So just keep it reasonably short, 10 centimeters. You double back on it and just create a, a loop. So all I've done is create a loop of thread and you can run your thread back into position here. Now, just for proportion's sake, you want to utilize at least three quarters of the entire shank. That's your entire shank as we talk about shank length. That's three quarters. My wing case, my legs, and everything else is going to happen. Again, that makes for a nicely proportioned dragon. Right, hackle pliers. If you don't have a spinning loop tool, if you do, use this. If you don't, the trick is to try and trap this right in the middle of the thread. Now, I got lucky that time. I've managed to get the thread pretty much in the middle. All right, you all know a clipboard clip for using with a clipboard. Or if you have a magic tool, that's another thing you can use. Take two feathers, and this is where it gets quite fun. You can take an olive. I've got two woolly bugger. Don't use strung marabou here, by the way. It, it's going to just be very difficult to control. I've got two woolly bugger feathers here. You can take an olive and a brown and put them together. Or you can take an olive and a black or a brown and a black. Whatever you want to do, but just use two feathers. And then what you can do is if you have the clipboard clip. How many of you have got a clipboard clip? Nobody. Have you? Well done. I didn't bring one, so I'm going to do it the difficult way. <laughs> and it's fine. It's good because most of you don't have it. What you want to do is hold this side of the feather and don't try and keep it too flat. Just tear and hold that marabou and bunch it together. So I've torn off from two feathers a whole whack of marabou. Now right about now, if I was doing the Jansen Dragon the traditional way, I'd be tying clumps of marabou around the hook shank. I'd probably have to do it once, maybe twice, probably three times. But not just on top. I'd have to tie it on the sides, underneath, and on top. Or maybe just on top and underneath. I'd probably get away with that. But it's laborious, okay? But before I go any further, you must get rid of these hard bits here. After you finish this fly, it looks like a turkey exploded in the place, but that's also fine. We don't have to clean up. All right, just open the dubbing loop. Make sure your hackle pliers has got it nice and tight. Just pull on those hackle pliers, just check it's gripped it, and then we just put that marabou into it. You can generally let go. I'll get my fingers out of the way now, and just spread that marabou out. Just keep the marabou nice and tight. Hey? Don't, oh, sorry, the thread nice and tight. Don't release it. Also what I'm doing is I'm trying to bias and I'm not going to move around too much now because then I'll cock it up but the natural fibers are, are longer to the one side of the thre thread does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what you do is pinch your thread yeah. pinch your thread at the bottom I don't think you can see what I'm doing here and then spin your ankle pliers and just keep spinning your ankle pliers and let the thread start to take it up don't try and use your 18-0 or 15-0 or 16-0 thread here because you're not going to get very far 6-0 is the, the least amount of, or the, the weakest thread you want to use here. Okay, and just keep twisting it. And what we're creating is a marabou rope. The dubbing twister works a lot quicker. If your hackle pliers are very light, what you'll find is you'll be spinning these hackle pliers and spinning these hackle pliers. What you do then is roll the thread. Forget about the hackle pliers. Roll your thread. See how much quicker this is happening? I don't know if you can see it in the camera there. And then once you've got it, grip it, release your hackle pliers. These hackle pliers are very heavy. And then grip it a bit further up. Are you with me? Okay. 
Right, you could use a dubbing teaser or brush here. I'm not going to bother too much. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to start to wind this big concoction of marabou. And just stroke the fibers back. Just pay a little bit of attention here. Don't, uh, don't rush this. Get those fibers back. Stroke it out. We're almost looking like a phyloplume damsel in a way here. Uh, and by the way, when we get orders for commercially tied phyloplumes, have you ever tried to find phyloplume and olive in any major quantity? Anybody? Anybody found it? I'll pay. Nobody has, no. So it's not easy to find. So you can make phyloplume dragons with this, okay? You just got to spend a little more time pinching and tweaking it and so on. Right, I'm just working these fibers back. I'd probably fish this just as it is right now. But anyway, we're going to get a dragon shape going yeah right remember what I said you want to fill up three quarters of the shank we'll finish that off and then we'll just cut the thread out okay you can take your wire brush now or your velcro brush and give it a tweak and a tweezer and just pull on it and right okay you could even come in with your scissors don't be too aggressive you might catch one of those threads all right, what I suggest now, and what I usually do, is I whip finish off, and I do another one, and another one, and another one. Then I sit there and I pinch. You can cut the original Jansen Dragon, but I use a combination here. And what I'll do is I'll just come in and just cut that marabou. Now, don't throw this away. I'm going to use that. It's a bit of marabou you cut. Don't throw it away. I'm going to stop, Jolly. What's no, happening? No, that's fine. Okay, then we start to pinch. We're looking for a dragon shape. So what you want to do is you want to pinch it closer in the neck area. You want to pinch it a bit shorter. Or trim it. And on the top, you're probably all saying, oh, well, why don't we just tie a proper roach? It would be much easier, much quicker. But that's not what fly tying is all about. We're looking for a sort of a dragon shape. I'm going to tweak and trim a little bit more here underneath. And I'm probably going to take a little bit off the top here. And we all know that dragon shape, that shape I'm sort of looking for. It's starting to come. And this is why I, okay, I say don't throw that away and I'm chucking it all on the floor. But yeah, I've got some more. Keep it. We're going to dub with that just now, okay? All right, that's fine. Once we get the wing case in and start to, right, wing case. What I use here is, as the Jansen uses, a bit of peacock oil. You want quite a substantial clump. But when you select your peacock oil, stay away from the thick ends here. Stay away from this area. Keep that for stripping when you want to make zacks and stuff. Okay, this is great. This bottom end of the peacock oil is great for when you strip all the flu off and you want to make zack nymphs or once in a way bodies or whatever the case is work right up at the top here where the soft stuff is for, for the wing case and that's what I've already pre-selected here don't worry about length, we're going to cut that we'll tie that sure, um, one, two, three <laughs> no, I'm joking there's probably 15, 20 strands yeah, you're quite right, Mark. Oh, quite a bunch there's quite a bunch, yeah And then double it back. Get right up against the eyes. Before I double it back, it's going to make it my life much easier to come in here. Just split that up. Get in there and just trim it to length. You could trim it, you could cut it to length and tie it into length if you like. But this is a good rough and ready fly. Right. That's the wing case in. Right. Now what I want to do is double this wing case back. And that's going to be pulled over just now. All right, I've got a little bit of a, a fetish for rubber legs. Um, so, you know, the original Jansen used to use a lacquered turkey. I mean, I don't know what... He's a great fly tire, but I don't know what he was thinking, to be quite honest. You know, you take turkey and you lacquer it, it's like stiff as hell. It takes time to do it. it it's just not nice. You could put partridge in, you could do all sorts of things, but for my money... 
And I think if Herman Bortus here has the popper roach we mentioned one more time, he's probably going to plut. But I like to put rubber legs in. I use barred rubber legs. These are little silly nymph legs. And I'm going to put a set of three in. If you want to just whack in two, by all means. And I'm going to put one set on this side. One set on that side. You can see I own a fly shop. I'm really wasteful. But there we go. You could probably get away with less rubber in this. And then, let me not be too ridiculous. I'll take some off there. No, that's going to make it difficult. So, right, Just so we don't fight with these legs, I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter for now. Put your thread. <laughs> okay, the middle legs you want to put at the bottom. If you just want to go with two, by all means, don't, don't bother with the full whack, okay? Just get them in basically so they're in shape. Don't worry too much about getting them exact. We'll position them with, uh, with the dubbing just now. Okay, that one's got to be cut a bit shorter because he's not giving me an idea. There we go. Right. Okay. That's fine. All my roaches, these well, the ones I tie myself, not commercially. I like to, I like to put in three sets of legs. That's just my own. Right, that that marabou that you pinched off and just mix it up. Make sure there's none of those hard bits that we cut off earlier, and just pinch it and break it. You probably need some more. That looks terrible, so I'll just use another feather. I don't know if many of you have dubbed with marabou. But it makes a great dubbing material. All my red-eyed damsels in the head area are dubbed. The trick is with like any dubbing is just to use very small amounts. Don't, don't try and put a lot of marabou in a time. Tiny little wisps of marabou. The more this fly gets chewed up, the rougher it looks. Um, it doesn't fall apart on you. Marabou is a great dubbing medium. You can when you if you've done a mixed mottled brown, one like I was mentioning earlier. You'll end up with two two colours of marabou. So, so mix them together. All right. And then what we'll do is this is when we're going to position our legs. Just keep going forward. Okay, I like the position of my back legs are fine. Let's get in front. The front legs. Neck area we want fairly slim. We're going to need some more marabou. Right, we're nearly done. We're just going to go between the eyes a few times. Now, why go through all the hassle of making a dragon like this? If we could just dub. I don't know how many of you have tied a, a large lake dragon, Kaufman's lake dragon. Probably takes as long as this, if not longer, because you've got to build an underbody and you've got to keep dubbing and dubbing and dubbing. This is quite quick. Once you get into the rhythm of it, it's a fairly quick fly. Okay, now I'm just going between my eyes. My legs are out the front there. And then just finish off. Pull those rubber legs back. It's coming now, Charlie. <laughs> I know I forgot something in that one fly I tied you, but that <laughs> <laughs> happens, eh? I once did a tying demo and with Jeff Taylor, old... Safa, I think it was, South African Fly Tires Association. But they said, no, you can do it after the bra. Huge mistake. <laughs> Huge mistake. Okay. Pull your wing case over. Now, those of you guys who don't, you probably all know that by now, is when you go to tie a wing case in right up at the eye of the hook, make sure you take a good couple of turns right in front before you cut anything off. What it does is it shifts your wing case up like that so you create an angle. So you can come in with your scissors and really cut it flush and it doesn't shoot out. Because if it did now, well, go back to the drawing board. OK. 
Okay, and then we'll just whip finish that off. How many times I've done that and caught that rubber leg in there? <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> what do I do now? Uh, right. Yeah. Right, now you can just trim your legs. I like to make the back legs the longest. Middle leg slightly shorter. And the front legs probably about the same length. Fly's got a lot of bounce, a lot of movement. Right, now you can kind of tweak, you can trim, you can pluck, you can do what you like. Just to get the basic, you want it flat along the bottom, okay? Dragon is very flat along the bottom. If I don't like the height of this here, it's perfectly acceptable in this particular pattern's case just to trim. Why well, go through all the trouble with this fly? Like the Papa Roach, well, first of all, it gives you another tying technique. Tying is about fun. It's about doing something that you think, yeah, oh, that's lacquer. But this fly, I like the Papa Roach, but probably even more so. It's got a lot of inherent movement. You can do a lot of things. You guys might have heard about the Philo Plume Leech. Another great pattern. Phyla plume's hard to get off. Hold up. Use this dubbing loop technique to trap black marabou into a loop, and you can pinch and pluck marabou and get a really awesome leech pattern. And what happens is with this, that fly, even when it's static, it's just breathing and moving, very effective. Great pattern to fish, and there you have it. So, by all means, you don't have to put three legs in. If that, just put two, that's fine. You don't have to. It's, you're just trying to create that suggestion of legs. There you go. Thanks very much. Yeah. Good stuff. Right. That's all your material. Pleasure.